Good morning. In today's video, I'm going to. I've already taken the cylinders off that were left on at the end of video five. I believe this is video six. I'm going to take the piston heads off, take the connecting rods off, and we'll get going on with the rest of this disassembly. Now, the one thing I did do off camera the other day or yesterday in the garage is I was able to get this screw that has the ball head installed or broken off in there. I was able to get that loose. I've got all of these screws loose right now. Right now I want to try and get this Woodruff key out and put these parts. I don't know why that Woodruff key always wants to give me some trouble here. that has all the single, single parts. So pardon me for fumbling around here momentarily. Thought I was ready to start this video and apparently I wasn't quite as ready as I hoped. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I've already done it on one, on cylinder number two is I pulled this off, pulled the piston off, I pushed that piston pin out. And one of the things, I was watching my videos from um, my 320, one of the two 320s I worked on, and I noticed a lot of differences here, and I think it has to do with the displacement of the engine, obviously. This, uh, the 320 piston was hollowed out, had a lot of holes in it, and you could basically see through it, it was very light, I think it was bigger bore, obviously, because these are 120 size heads and the 320 is 160s, I believe. Anyway, so getting this thing out was a little bit more difficult. Uh, I was able to easily just pull these end caps out before, but since in here, you can see in here, there's no, on the 320 there's play, connecting rod play that goes back and forth so you can kind of move the piston back and piston head back and forth on there. On this one there is no play, it's right there. So I couldn't get my fingernail or anything in there to pull up on one of those Teflon pads to help pull that out first. So what I end up having to do is heat this thing up a little bit with the heat gun and just kind of tap it out, which is what I'm going to do here again. I was trying to pull those little Teflon things out with this pick and it just wasn't working. So I'm just trying to heat this up just enough to help loosen it so I can tap that out. Let's see if that's enough. I've just kind of got a flat, flat bit here. so it should just come right out now. Yeah, it got a little warm there, so that's number four. Okay, now we'll do three. Yeah, I got a little warm. Not 
See, I know it's starting to heat up enough to tap out when I start to see oil kind of pushing out of there. Three is out and quite warm. and pins are out. Next order of business is I don't need that. <coughs> I need to get my ground driver and we're going to take connecting rods off here. And again I was reviewing my old video from I don't know if that's the right one. I think that is 1.5 1.5 millimeter <coughs> hex. Now these connecting rods for me to take off the connecting rod on cylinder one, I have to access it from the bottom here. So I'm going to put it at bottom dead center and then I can see the screw. And before I do that, I'm going to put, hold it here and hopefully the heat doesn't translate to my hand too much. So I'm going to try and heat those up just a little bit. Now there is an orientation with these connecting rod, connecting rods and their hat, their lower halves. What I've already noticed is that the OS that's embossed on there faces the front of the engine. So this is cylinder number one. got to sit here and kind of finagle around and find these rotate it around so you can find these screw heads So that connecting rod is off. So on the 320, on the 320, they had little dots that denote the proper sides. On this one, they do not. So what I'm going to do here is I believe I've got these oriented properly just because of some staining I see on there. I am going to run this screw back in here and keep this orientation because it doesn't look like they have those little dots like they had on the 320. The 320 had a little punch mark. right here had a punch mark right here and then here that denoted the same side so the only thing I'm going by here now because that dropped in there and that typically happens is there was a little bit of staining here and I thought I saw about the same kind of staining here so 
that's how it's going to go in there. I don't see any other markings right now that denote front and back for those. So it's going to, I'm just going to have to be really careful here trying to make sure that doesn't just drop in there like that. Maybe if I do it this way, it'll have less of a likelihood of doing that. I don't know. It's really kind of weird to try to keep this crankshaft from doing what it's doing. Oh, there's one screw out. Now, is there any way I can keep that thing from dropping and rotating on me? Pull it out like that. It's laying in there and I can see it. I just don't want it to flip over. Well, I think I can, the screw is still in it, so I think I'm pretty safe in knowing that that was that top side, that was that forward facing side, so that works out. You know these gloves are good for protecting my skin, but man, they're just not for dexterity. I really can't feel feel through them. Okay, so that was cylinder number two. Hmm, this is not a good thing. This could be a deal breaker right here. Shit, look at that. Okay, so this is number two's connecting rod and this is number one's connecting rod. I might have to zoom way in here, or as far in as I can zoom. Number two, number one. Number two is bent. So that connecting rod is bent, so unfortunately, unless I can find a replacement connecting rod for a 240, unless they're the same, if they're the same connecting rod as a 320, then there's a chance. But I don't even know if I've seen 320 connecting rods. So that sucks, because I mean that's that connecting rod is very clearly bent. Let's do it, let's put it this way. So you can see. So, that's zoomed in as far as I can go on this camera too. So, um, Floyd, I'm not sure what to say now. Or Floyd, why am I saying Floyd? JP, I don't know what to say now. You got a bent connecting rod. Ugh, that's never a good thing to have to tell somebody. Never had to tell anybody that. Let's continue at least taking these connecting rods off too, I guess, or maybe I stop the video here and and consult because if I can't get a connecting rod for this engine, I don't know what the history of the story with this engine is going to be at this point. So I think I'm going to just end the video here and contact JP and let him know what I found. Before I continue doing anything else and spending any more time on this engine, we need to have a confab and figure out if we can find connecting rods.